Hey, we're going to start the show off uh, with uh, a call to action. I've got Brian Kelzer on here from Montana Bowhunters Association uh, with something we really need everybody to jump on board with. Brian, did I say your name right? You said my name right. Perfect. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> All right. So what do you got going on? So, unfortunately, every two years, the crossbow issue comes up here in Montana. And this year being a legislative year, uh, it has reared its ugly head again. And SB 111 just got introduced uh, to our Senate and the verbiage got put out, which uh, th- this bill is uh, is – is geared towards trying to get disabled people um, the ability to use a crossbow in our archery season. It, uh, for a lot of years, they just were chasing around trying to get get the crossbow introduced, uh, full inclusion, just rammed right in archery season. But now they're starting to be sneaky and just trying to get in incrementally. And this year, it's for people with disabilities and and the fight's beginning. We might hear this bill on the Senate floor as early as this coming week. Now, you and the uh, your game department, and I always screw it up with Montana. Uh, it's FWP, right? Yep, Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. Yeah, so the NBA and Fish, Wildlife, and Parks have already come up with a solution that works for uh, disabled hunters, right? Absolutely. Yeah, 20 years ago, the Montana Bowhunters Association and uh, our fish, wildlife, and parks sat to ga- down together and came up with uh, the permit to modify archery equipment, PTMAE for short, which basically, uh, with doctor's approval, lets someone install a draw lock device on a standard compound bow of, of some sort. And uh, description of an arrow doesn't change. Um, bunch of other things don't change but it still gives that person the ability to shoot a vertical bow with a draw lock and get out there and go hunting and on top of that the Mohunter, Montana Bow Hunters Association puts together uh, a, a funding packet every year and we help buy and install and work with people who contact us to to do this to to get them out in the field and keep them bow hunting so this, this has been challenged in court several times over the years, and it's it's always stood up in court. It's it, it's a really great deal. We just need be happy to have more people sign up for it. We got the money. We'd love to help out. Um, and so with, with with already having a solution that works, and you and you have people. Didn't you tell me a number of how many people used this last year? Last year in Montana, there was 341 people who used the PTMAE uh, uh, exception to to bow hunt in Montana, or they at least bought a tag. And we we have outfitted, you know, a number of people over the years. I I can't say who we've helped uh, was out there last year, but that's that's how many folks in the state at least bought a license. So with a solution... um we're, we saying collectively as bow hunters, not that I live in Montana, but um, we are not excluding anybody. We're not taking anything away from anything. The, the opportunity is there. There is no group of um, crossbow hunters in Montana that you're discriminating. Um, I think nope. this. I think this really shows that it is merely a move by the manufacturers to uh, take a part of the archery season. Um, and I just I think this is just an example um, of how blatant oh, it is. Ab- absolutely. This is a manufacturer deal. They've been pushing it for – I've been involved with the Montana Bowhunters Association on the board of directors and now as sitting vice president for about 10 years. And when I first got on I, and started figuring out some of this, what was going on, it was – it became apparent very quickly that this was this was a manufacturer deal trying to get a foothold. And the first few years I was involved with legislative sessions, it was they were just pushing for complete inclusion, just ramrodding right in. And uh, those got shut down very quickly and very handily. But now it's getting sneaky and just trying to take little bitty bites out of out of what we have. And unfortunately, that's worked in other states to get in. Wisconsin and Kansas are great examples where it starts for disabled people, 
pretty soon they're trying to get elderly then it's women and kids and once they got the first three groups conquered it's it's been easier for them to get full inclusion in and that's what we're that's what we're worried about here and trying to keep it bay. Now, what are those stats that you have um, uh, coming out of, what is it, Wisconsin you have some uh, data from? Yes, I sent you the Wisconsin stuff today. Can you t- tell us a little bit about that? So, Wisconsin um, went to the crossbow in 2014. That's when it got in and got pushed to full inclusion after being for, for the disabled only and this was supposed to be a like a three-year sunset deal and the way they worded it which is much how montana's uh sb111 is worded too is they're trying to push it into archery making it archery equipment circumventing our fish and game commission and once it gets in there all of a sudden it's it's part of that equipment and you can't get it out well wisconsin can't quit get it out right now and 2014, uh, 33 percent of the archery harvest was by crossbows. In the subsequent years that followed, it went to 39 percent, 45 percent, 54 percent. In 2020, this year, it's 58 percent of deer harvested in uh, archery were with crossbows. And numbers-wise, uh, the 2020 season that was 62,824 deer shot with crossbows. 45,932 deer shot with vertical bows. So you, you can see how this thing is, is snowballing there. Well, in, what I saw was they had two record kills the last two years. Isn't that correct? Yes. Yeah. So not, 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 a, good, uh, not a good thing that they got going on in Wisconsin. And to, to, let that into, um, to let that into Montana, I think, would be a travesty. Uh, I think it is in any state. Uh, if somebody wants to bow hunt and they are truly uh, handicapped, sounds like you have a solution there. Um, I can promise you that these manufacturers are not looking to better our time in the field, but to make money off us. Yep. All comes down to the dollar. Yep. Uh, so how can people help? So the Montana Bow Hunters Association, as well as the traditional bow hunters of Montana and several other groups, uh, all non-affiliated but all looking towards the same goal here of shutting this down, have come together and we've, we're have we making our voices heard. Um, we're writing our senators uh, emails. There's petitions floating around on the Montana Bow Hunter Association website. There's a take action link where you can send an email uh, and sign a petition that goes straight to the Senate Fish and Game Committee that will be hearing this bill. Um, it is an auto-generated email. I, I believe you can personalize it, too. We've already got a message from one of the senators saying he's sick of getting uh, uh, auto-generated emails because he got, like, several hundred today. But in my mind, that tells me it's working. People are chiming in. Um, would love a few personalized ones in there, too. It, five minutes of your time to, to help us out and, and and tell these folks, you know, just what what we think and that we're not trying to discriminate against disabled people. We, we got an avenue to, to help them out. We just don't want these crossbows to get their foot in the door and start chipping away at our awesome six-week archery season. You know, I, I would say you got one thing wrong there. You said help us out. Um, no joke, man. I really feel strongly about whether you hunt, live in Montana, whether you hunt in Montana now, um, this is the future because uh, it is helping yourself out. Uh, it, the more the more foothold these things get in, the more we'll see statistics like what's coming out of Wisconsin. And guaranteed, sure as the uh, sun will set, um, it will result in loss opportunities for archery seasons down the road. Absolutely. The states that have fallen to this in the last 20 years, it's – I don't have the number right on top of my head, but it's like 27 states now that allow uh, archery or crossbows in, in archery season. And most of the states that have fallen have seen upwards of 40% season uh, reduction um, just to accommodate the, the you know success rate going through the roof. But it, it's yep. only obvious. you got to either limit tags, cut seasons, do something to make people – with a more advanced tool, be less successful. And that we don't want that. Nope. Nope. 
Uh, wish I had more time. There will be a link uh, to your um, website in the show notes. So I have already uh, went through the process. All you got to do is click that link. You uh, punch in your address in your uh, zip code, and I think it takes less than five minutes. It took me about three minutes, and I'm pretty dense. So you ought to be able to fare well on that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good stuff. Thank you very much for doing this. Well, my hat's off to you guys over there, the NBA and the traditional bowl owners, Montana. You guys do a great job and uh, keep up the fight. Oh, we're going to, no doubt. Take care, Brian. All right. Thanks. Brian. Brian. Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of the Stick Bow Chronicles, brought to you by the Black Widow Bow Company. What is going on, Blake? What's up, old man? <laughs> Dude, I shaved. <laughs> Come on. I look so much. Somebody said I look 10 years younger. I shaved my mustache and nobody's noticed, if that tells you anything. You had a mustache? Barely. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I hate you. I just thought you didn't wash your face or something. <laughs> did I tell you? Uh, did I tell you why? I wish y'all could see my finger right now. <laughs> did I tell you why I shaved? No, about, you didn't. About scaring the kid. Oh gosh, this is this is in fact a true story. Uh, so, like the day after Christmas, we went over to some friends' house, some good friends, really good friends, and their daughter. Uh, she's got a three or four, four year old, I think. And, uh, you know, there's a bunch of people there. So I don't, you know, I wasn't really paying attention. Well, apparently the kid said, that looks like a mean Santa. I'm not going to talk to him. <laughs> so I didn't know any of this. <laughs> and my wife told me like three or four days later what happened. You know, I guess it was just a couple days ago. Cause I was like, Oh, all right. Everybody that's told me to shave and get a haircut. I'll do it now. <laughs> if I'm going to scare little kids and ruin Santa Claus for them, I guess I, I guess it'd be my duty to clean up. Yeah, I commented on your Facebook post and said it looked like you got Botox. Oh, well, I, I, I may have. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, and oh, I'm going, shit. and I'm going to tan. I got my. I'm using that gift card for that tanning booth. Yeah. Well, when I shave, I go from looking like I'm 19 to 16. <laughs> I looked at my kid today. Me and my kid were rolling today, uh, doing a little jujitsu roll. You know, not that I know anything about jujitsu. I'm just like the, the, uh, the heavy, the bag, the heavy bag. And uh, we were all tied up in a knot. I looked there, and he's got that peach fuzz below his nose, and that just bugs the hell out of me. I'm like, you're gonna shave after this. You gotta whack that off, man. Yeah, I will wax that if you don't shave it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I hope he wadded you up. You know what? Um, when he starts to get in a position where I'm going to tap, I actually, I let him, you know, do his moves and stuff. But uh -huh. when it gets mm -hmm. serious, no, when it gets serious, like, all right, then the old man strength has to come out and st start <laughs> punching him in the ribs and stuff. No, no, this is street fighting, buddy. This is street, this is sand lot. Yeah, I think old man strength is, is bro science. We'll have Cody Greenwood study that. It sounds like bro science to me. <laughs> uh, Speaking of uh, old Cody, he's got some uh, some new arrows hitting the market. Yeah, you know, as we're speaking, uh, I don't know if it was him, somebody, oh no, somebody got his arrow shafts and uh, I don't know what you call it, hefted. Uh, some uh, flint, not flint, but uh, napped heads. They look oh, really, cool. They look really sweet. Oh, that may have been uh, uh, Daniel. Tony Tony Tall? Oh, no, okay. Tony Tall, yeah, he's a self-bow guy. Yeah. Uh, oh, they look awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he kills a lot of deer with stone we points, gotta, too, I think. We got to get uh, – we've got to get Cody on. I know nothing about these arrows uh, other than just seeing pictures. I know he's done some stuff. He sent me pictures and talked to me a little bit about them. But, they look awesome. Well, and he didn't – he's doing some kind of a um, – some kind of a – epoxy or some hardening thing at the front 
He's going to get the footing. Yeah. Well, he's going to get mad and he's going to message us. But when this thing drops, we'll be in Texas. So we won't have to listen to him. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. They're, they're slick looking. And if I know, if I know Cody, uh, I'm, I'm sure they're top quality. Um, but yeah, they look cool. If I was ever going to shoot wood arrows, I'd, I'd, uh, I'll tell you, I, I need to get another longbow and set them up with wood arrows. It'll probably sit in my closet, but well, I have that. I have that original sixty nine, original fifty nine Kodiak, uh-huh. and it is, it's it doesn't, it ought to be a crime to shoot anything but wood off that. Yeah, um, it, it, but they just sound so much better. Wood arrows off a, off a, uh, a trad bow. I mean, they just sound different. They just yeah, it's cool. Yeah, and I've I've never fired a wood arrow, so I I, I, I want to dabble with it. I don't know how much I'll uh, how I'm much not, I would ever hunt with one, but I'm not sure that Cody's arrows are trad. Those wood arrows he's making, he's got so much <laughs> into that. I'm not sure they're trad. So. You're gonna fire him up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do. Uh, we just fire each other up all the time. <laughs> uh, speaking of arrows, you're gonna go back to you're gonna go back to two hundred fours, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, looking f- after we get done with this Texas thing, I'm going to uh, mess around with some 204s. I want to try the uh, the Iron Will um, components. You know, I for for a long time I was you know gluing or epoxying um, um, aluminum shafts over carbon, and they're mm-hmm. they were just bomb proof. I mean, mm-hmm. bomb proof. So um, yeah, I'm gonna go back to that. Give it a try. I hear Pretty you. And, slick. I hear you and Bill just discovered something amazing. Yeah, um, <laughs> actually, we'll, we'll give credit where credit is due. So I was talking to uh, Bill, and he has started using uh, Kimsha hot melt, right? So basically, using the the uh, two hundred four system as a basically a glue in. So you just screw the insert onto the broadhead, coat that sucker in hot melt shove it down in the arrow and when you uh ready to take it out just boil a pot of water stick it in there about 15 seconds yank it out and you know do whatever you want to do so that'd be handy not only for um saving components if you break an arrow but handy for tuning also you can try different way to inserts um and i think he got the idea from aaron's been doing it for a while apparently and had good luck with it um is what what bill told me and he said that he tried it the other day on a, I think it was a rampage, a black Eagle rampage and uh, no prep to the shaft, nothing. Use that Kimsha hot melt and put a broad head in it to, with an impact collar, glued it all in and hung a 50 pound weight off of it for, I can't remember how much time, 30 minutes or an hour and it, it never budged. So that's going to be a pretty cool way to just simplify that whole that whole system, it'll be uh, nice to be able to remove the the hardware if you want, put it in a new arrow or whatever. So I, sure. I'm going to start trying it and see how it goes. Yeah, that way if you bust an arrow, you can still grab the components out of there. Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, the you know, Bill's stainless, those hardened stainless inserts, I mean, they're they're fairly, fairly expensive. So it'd be nice to be able to retrieve those bad boys and stick them in a, a new arrow. I used to, uh, when I did that, just on the shank, so I, you know, you use a field point or whatever on the mm-hmm. insert to slide it in. Um, I guess I'm not familiar. I'm not familiar with uh, uh, Will uh, Bill's system, so I don't know if it's the same thing, but I, when I was doing them with the hit inserts on Easton. Um, that same thing. Well, I would put a little wax on the shank of the uh, point, whether, you know, whatever it was, broadhead or whatever. Uh-huh. Is it? Because uh, well, well, when you go to take it out, sometimes it's got a little hot melt res- residual in there on that shank. See, yeah, and the way I do it, well, the way I'll probably do it is just glue the broadhead and everything in. Oh, yeah. Um, and then have, you know, a dozen made up with broadheads glued in. Um, the, I mean, everything glued in, the broadhead and the collar, and then have, you know, a half a dozen sitting around with, with field tips in them. And uh-huh. then if I ever wanted to yank the broadheads out, just pull a pot of water, yank the broadheads out, screw a field tip on, and rinse and repeat. Huh. There you go. So, but I may be, uh, I may be swapping the micros here in the next, well, I say swapping the micros. I shot micros some this year, but um, 
well, I won't dive too far down that rabbit hole, but yeah. Uh, well, you anyway. want some? I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm going the other way. <laughs> I'll yeah. wave when I go by. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to, uh, yeah, I, like I said, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole right now, but I'm, yeah, I'm going to probably go back to micros, try something new. I'm always messing with stuff. Oh, me with too. Arrow, arrows. I don't, fun. Yeah, I don't change bows very often, but I always mess with arrows. And, yeah. I always, and I always think this is it. This is what I'm going to use for the rest of my life forever. I'm going to use these 2018 aluminums forever. Well, I've I've changed bows way like you like Blaine I, Swanson? I, no, not that bad. <laughs> um and and Blaine's actually I think he's been shooting the widow for a while now. Yeah, but. I think we gave him enough crap that he's like, "Okay, I'll stick with one." <laughs> <laughs> no, so I I whenever I first started um, I got a widow right out of the box. Probably didn't go about it the smartest way. I bought a 60 pound widow for my first bow, which is not what I would recommend people to do, but, uh, that's it. it just, it worked. Um, and in that first, for whatever reason, in that first three to six months of me picking up a trad bow, that was the best I ever shot. I mean, uh, and I, I've done some pretty good shooting since then, but I've never, I've never been able to get back to that. And I don't know if my brain has gotten in the way. I'm sure that's probably a lot of it, but, um, I'm excited to, I'm excited to, I, I think just going back to what I was originally, cause I'm getting basically the same exact bow, just different materials from yeah. widow. And I'm hoping that that will give me that, uh, extra boost of confidence because that's, that's what I was shooting back then. So, um, I'm pretty excited and, uh, yeah. You're getting the carbon limbs, right? Should be slick. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Yes, I am. I'm, I'm looking forward to everything I've heard about them. Uh, I think Cody's jacked around with them some, and everything I've heard about them has been been really, really good. So We've, we've just mentioned Cody's name like, like four times. Yeah, we need to start charging his ass for advertising. <laughs> well, just so people know, this don't, don't hang up. Don't quit now because this episode is not about Cody Greenwood. <laughs> <laughs> have we have we mentioned our guest yet? <laughs> no, we haven't. <laughs> no, it it uh, yeah, we need to start charging him. I even took him on a hog hunt last year and didn't charge him. <laughs> I can't Pretty wait to meet sucker. him. I can't wait to meet him. Um <laughs> Yeah, my buddy Kenny Marquat, uh we've hunted together a few times. We all hunted what, two thousand nineteen. He bear hunted uh with me last spring. Uh, he's a compound guy. He he came over the other day. He's got a he got a Samick Sage, I think, for Christmas. So still in the box. We unboxed it and got it all set up. and And I told him, I was like, "Hey, man, I don't, I don't really want to teach you how to shoot because I'm not sure the way I shoot is the greatest." You you tell, and he's like, "Well, I just I'm just gonna do what you do." So okay. So we went out there and kind of kind of got him going with his stance and form and stuff and. And he's, he, he took right to it. You know, he shoots compound. Um, he took right to it. And he, he told me, he's like, Hey, when I come over, should I wear shorts? I'm like, dude, you just, you just can't wear shorts. You got to earn those shorts. <laughs> like you just don't, <laughs> the hell do you think you are? <laughs> it's like a, shows up in a blue pair of Adidas that are about a four inch inseam. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, <laughs> That's good. Uh, it, yeah, uh, I, I guess we'll I guess we'll tease this. Uh yeah, we got a we got a little little t shirt design working with Mr. Uh, Jerry Shaw over at Photo Lab Studios that uh pretty damn funny. I, I told somebody I told somebody today when they were hacking on, I don't know what they were hacking on me about something. Oh about shaving my beard. It's like, man, it's a good thing uh, that I have a, a good self esteem. <laughs> you guys are kind of rough on me. And and if my wife knows how much shit I take, she's a pistol, man. She's gonna start, yeah. Cross. <laughs> okay. So I guess it's a good thing I'm like 27 hours away. Be a lot of work. <laughs> what about the rest ass. of them suckers? They're everywhere. They're scattered across the world. <laughs> oh, um, that's funny. Where are we going? Oh, so Kenny, uh, we were doing like five yard shooting, working on his uh, release, and and you know, he only probably shot. 30, 40 arrows. It's just a 40 pound, uh, Samick. Um, mm -hmm. he's got a, he's a big guy though. He's drawing a lot. Anyways, uh, I had my little orange arrow gripper 
you know, that sucker's probably only, oh, half inch, uh, five eighths of an inch thick. And it was laying on my target. So now, now we're about eight yards away. And, and uh, I said, all right, try shooting that arrow gripper. And I shot and I put one just right on top of it. Right. And he mm-hmm. shoots and blows it right off the top. I was like, there you go. Apparently I'm the world's greatest teacher. <laughs> That's how you do it. Right there. Yeah, right there. Do you're done. Time. You're done. Go get your shorts now, son. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Good stuff. Oh, uh, poor guy. Well, uh, the other thing I want to talk about, um, I kind of got an idea. I was up on the oh. hill today. No, I was up on the hill today. I was looking, I went up to, to specifically cut a cat track to see if I could find a lion track. And I did, but it was old. It was, it, you know, it wasn't a big cat. I showed you pictures, right? Long cougar hunt, huh? <laughs> Dude, you know how old a cougar would be for me? <laughs> like Betty 80, White. <laughs> yeah, Betty White, man. <laughs> She's... <laughs> Oh, uh, quite the euphemism there. Uh, yeah. Anyways, right, go ahead. Uh, it was a pretty old track, but then I got to thinking. You know, I was pretty brushy in there, and, and the light bulb went off, man. And I am going to do this, um, be it, be it lions or, or coyotes or whatever. My next stretch of days off, I'm going to take that tree saddle and a handful of steps. And I'm not going to, you know, it's not looking to get real high, but to uh, uh, you know, just kind of brushy to get a better angle, man. That I'm pretty stoked about this. That'll be a lot of fun. That's that's one thing I have not shot with a stick bow yet. So I've not shot any kind of predator. I've shot quite a few coyotes with a with a compound, but I hadn't hadn't had an opportunity with a stick bow yet, which is kind of strange. Usually, once a deer season, I'll have one run underneath me or something. But I hadn't seen one this year this or the year, last couple of years. I had well, I hadn't seen any in the last couple of years, and then this year, I think I had two in two days. The first shot I missed was. I didn't mind missing that shot. It was a long shot on a coyote. But the second shot the next day, that was freaking ridiculous. Them little boogers can be hard to hit. <laughs> I hit one one time. Uh, uh, it was about, gosh, I don't know, 25 yards or something. It was kind of a poke on a, on a coyote. He dropped. I was shooting those. Uh, I was shooting Wenzel Woodsman. So they were whistling. Mm-hmm. They, were, they, were, they were whistling like whistling Dixie heading down there. And uh, he dry, he's perfectly broadside, and he drops and spins to get out of there. And the arrow caught him at the base of the skull. Didn't go 20. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's funny. Yeah, no, they're, they're hard to hit with a bow. Even with compound, they're hard to hit. Them little boogers get out of the way, and oh, they, yeah. they don't ever stop moving. No, no. But, I, I, well, hey, while we're uh, talking about that, this will come out after – Bill announces the new wide solid. Uh, so we're talking about whistling broadheads. So um, this will, and if it doesn't, we'll edit it out. But this will drop after he's come out with the wide solid, which is the head that I was talking about that I've been shooting for a pretty good while now that I've uh, kind of getting what I wanted, getting the, the wide cutting diameter and, and getting the, the solid so that it's, it's, it's quiet. Um, and yeah, it's it's awesome. Yeah, and, I'm looking uh, forward to seeing get, those. Need to get some to you. Yep. Well, uh, we've been yakking for a little bit. Maybe we ought to say who the guest is. Yeah. Oh, Becca yep. Becca Garris. Uh, her and I went round and round for about a year and a half trying to uh, get together to do a podcast, and uh, yeah, finally, finally, uh, our schedules matched up and. Got it done, and and I'll tell you, she's a she's a hoot. Uh, honestly, it was wasn't who I expected, not at all. She seems just like a country girl, kind of a redneck. Uh, grew up grew up uh, chasing carp and and rabbits and deer, and we had a blast. I really enjoyed talking to her. Uh, she did say something super funny about what she say. Uh, I, I asked her about her following. I'm like, how the hell did you ever get a hundred thousand followers on Instagram? She's like, I don't know, but I lost a lot when I got married. <laughs> Like so, I was laughing. I'm like, "What are these people are like?" Oh, I'm rejected. I'm out. I'm, I'm unfollowing. That's that was funny. That was pretty funny. But Eva Shockey lost a bunch too. Who? Eva Shockey. She shoot an airboat, didn't she? Oh, there's no telling, dude. There's no telling. But All right. Be sponsored by Crossman. 
<laughs> well, let's get out of here, eh? Yeah. All right. Big thanks to the sponsors. The Footed Shaft, Kefaru International, Selway Archery, and, of course, Black Widow Bows. Hey, appreciate all you guys listening, guys and gals listening. Um, keep it up. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, leave us, uh, leave us a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to. If you like this stuff, leave us a review. That, that helps us a bunch. So it takes you, about 30 seconds. Yeah, if you don't like it, quit listening. Yeah, there you go. Let's get out of here. <laughs> all right, thanks, everybody. Roger out. Hey, Becca, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Well, pretty good. Um, where are, you, are you in Ohio? Yes, I am. Are you guys having a... I'm in southern Ohio. Are you guys having a normal winter? Um, I mean, I get, it's been cold. We haven't really gotten any snow. I like to hunt in the snow, and I've only got to once this year so far, and it's not looking like we're getting any more anytime soon. It is just... I think I think the earth shifted and we are now in Seattle. It's been like 35 and rainy forever. <laughs> Just so depressing. Yeah, <laughs> you never you really never know what you're going to get in Ohio. One day it'll be 80, the next day it'll be 20. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I dig. I really do seriously love like when it gets zero and 10 below for a few weeks, even a month. It's just it's usually the sun you know is I mean? shining. At, at least. Yeah. At least with the cold weather, the deer are moving. Yeah. Right now, there's nothing. There's, so they're post-rut. Even the second rut's over, right? And uh, they just lock down? Yeah, I feel, I personally feel like the biggest thing that makes the deer lock down is the fact that um, our sixth day, we have a six-day gun season in the, I think it's mid-January, well, and then it's followed up by, Another two days, and then um, they have a late season muzzleloader. So once that deer season hits, it's kind of, I wouldn't say game over, but it's significantly harder to find deer. You uh, you have some state land that you hunt there? Is it you just hunting private? or? Yes. Yes, what? Um, I do a little of both. We have <laughs> five acres here, which this year has not been good at all. Um. And then we're about 10 minutes from a giant piece of public land, so I hunt public a lot. So what's that look like? Uh, and again, I mean, I might, it might be a, sound like a stupid question, but is it like acorn, you know, ridges, that type of stuff? Uh, yeah. Swamp, yeah. or what do you got? Um, we got a little of everything here. Um, are you Wait, are you talking public land or our property? Or just either. You know, just how, what's your, you know, like um, how you hunt and what's the tactics there? So our property is really hard because it's mostly a bunch of like thick stuff. we got blackberry brambles. We have literally one tree on our property that's big enough for a tree stand, and that's <laughs> it. We, most of the back behind our barns is very small trees and thick stuff. So I pretty much have to hunt ground blinds here. And it's hit or miss because the deer pass through and they don't really stay on our property. And then as far as public land, we have a little bit of everything. We have swamps, we have acorns, we have whatever you want to hunt, we have it. There's literally hundreds of acres here that I can hunt. It's cool. And then what's your season like? I mean, is it uh, really competitive? It's a wide open season, a general season. What do you got going on there? So in Ohio, our deer season is broken up by counties. I'm in Claremont County, so I don't really know how the other counties work, but we're in a three deer county. So we can get three deer total. Only one can be a buck. And you can only take one doe on public land, and it has to be before a certain date, which it's already passed. So right now, if I'm on public land, I can only shoot something with antlers. Um, we do have a really long season, though. It's from the end of September to the first week of February. Wow. Wow. Huh. Um, so... You could you, you so you have to or you're forced to shoot one of those does on private property if you fill both tags and is that what you're saying? Yes, if you want to shoot two does, it's got to be on 
private, which it kind of sucks. I just changed it last year. And I'm not 100% sure, but I'm 99% sure that you can only shoot one go on public and it has to be before. It's like December 16th or something. Interesting. So uh, as far as ground blinds, are you just brushing spots in? Are you actually using a blind? So up until the past two years, and <laughs> I had Isabella. Up until I had Isabella, I would hunt out of just regular pop-up ground blinds or I have a ghost blind. Or once in a while I would hunt um, just like natural cover and stuff. But Isabella hates ground blinds, so I have not hunted out of a ground blind in quite some time. So it's, I just kind of try to take advantage of natural cover when I can. Well, that's funny. So I know you've killed a couple of deer over there. Have you killed a deer with her in a not in a pop-up line? I have never killed a deer with her in a pop-up land. I always just... No kidding. Man, the that's a feat. past two deer, I have... <laughs> It's, see, that's, that's why it's so hard for me to get a deer. I mean, I used to kill a couple of deer every year, but since I had her, I've, I've only been getting one a year. I was really, I'm still really hoping to get another one this year, but it's not looking great. Um, yeah. At least, at least you have an excuse. I, I got, I, I hunted like eight weeks and then finally killed one the last <laughs> hour. At least you have an excuse. Yeah. I, I will say that at least I do have an excuse that it's hard to hunt with a kid and it's even harder to hunt with a toddler, not in a ground blind. Yeah. So tree stands are out for you for, for the foreseeable future. Yes. For this time in my life. Yeah. It's, I thought that I would get to hunt a tree stand this year. I thought maybe my husband would have time to watch Isabella and I would be able to sit in a tree stand, but his schedule, it's really makes it a little more difficult. So now, so far it's just ground. When you're, uh, when you're shooting off the, uh, in the ground, are you shooting off your knees? You have a little chair. How's that working for you? I do not bring a chair because I feel like I'm packing. So oh yeah, true. Much stuff. You got di- and diapers she's getting and heavy. I have the backpack. <laughs> I have all my snacks and water, whatever stuff I have in my backpack. So I don't carry anything extra. I if I'm if I'm on the ground like staying in one spot, I'll just kneel. Um, but the past two deer I've shot, I've been standing. Really, man, standing and getting drawn. That's that's got to be that's got to be a feat. Yes. Well, back circling back to instinctive shooting, um, I feel like instinctive shooting has been awesome for me, and even more so in the situations that I'm in. Instinctive for me, you know, you draw really fast without even thinking. You see your target and you shoot. And the past two deer I've shot, I haven't had time to think about it. It was either shoot now or don't shoot at all. So. I feel like that's been good for me. Yeah. What what kind of yardage are you talking here uh, on these last two deer? I want to say around, they've been under 20, mm-hmm. probably 15 to 17 yards. And then uh, how did you get started? Like what was the catalyst for instinctive shooting? Um, I know it was for what, what it was for me, but how did you learn or what was, you know, what, what pushed you in that direction? So when I When I started traditional, I knew no one, literally no one that shot traditional locally. My dad shot traditional when he was younger and he gave it up before I was ever born. So I never knew my dad to be shooting traditional. I live in another state, so, you know, 600 miles away, it was kind of hard for him to give me lessons. So I just had to go by what I found online and, you know, YouTube, Facebook, internet, magazines, um, and since I was big into bow fishing, all of that is instinctive. So I just naturally started instinctive and that's what worked for me. I tried a couple other ways and I was awful. So I'm just stuck with instinctive. <laughs> I, it's not a bad, uh, uh, um, contrary to popular belief, I don't think it's a bad place to be stuck. <laughs> now, uh, did, you, did you come across Jeff Cavanaugh, any of his stuff? He's, he's got a lot of instinctive shooting stuff on youtube yes yes i have yeah, i follow him on um social media too yeah he i had him on the podcast once we had a blast uh shooting the breeze uh he's a cool guy yeah he seems pretty cool yeah um 
Let's see, instinctive shooting. So, oh, you know, you mentioned bow fishing, and I gotta say, I yeah, I, it, that would that would be very harmful for me. I, I love bow fishing, but you talk about creating, like, I don't know if it's target panic, but straight up snap shooting and, and short drawing. Yes, it, yeah, that's that a is struggle. literally the thing that I struggled with more than anything, and even now, I in the summer, like, it's hard. It's really hard because you want to just lapse back into that sloppy shooting that you do while bow fishing. Yes. Yeah. And the same thing with aerial targets. I was shooting aerials and rolling discs and stuff and having a blast, but man, I just flat stopped. I'll throw them for my kid, but and it creates some bad, yeah, bad habits. Yeah, I tend to <laughs> take a short break from, well, I can't really say that I didn't this year. I would say I take a break from it, but I don't really take a break from practicing. I just ca- try to concentrate a little more on my form and my release during the summer when I'm bow fishing because, yeah, I, I will revert back to my sloppy, sloppy yeah. form. You, um, you know, I don't know if it was Tom Klum or Rod Jenkins or the, or the you know, the, the sum of both of them. I really, really worked on slowing my shot process down this year, you know, because – like snap shooting, I don't think snap shooting's a good idea. Um, and and I think that myself. No, I am. What's that? <laughs> I'm very guilty of snap shooting yeah. a lot. I yeah. I know I am, and it's partly because of the bow fishing. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I I snapshot for a lot of years for most of the whole of my bow hunting career, and it's worked. But I don't think it's really good. So, anyways, I slowed it down, and just recently. Uh, I heard somebody say, or I read it, like getting to anchor and enjoying being at anchor. And it was really resonated with me. And, you know, in the last month or so of shooting, it's just getting to anchor and just sitting there for a second yep. and, and absorbing it. It's kind of, yeah, it's been pretty awesome. Yeah, I uh, I videoed myself a couple times this past summer just to kind of look at my release. And, yeah, I had the same the same. Oh, my, my daughter's being crazy. <laughs> You're good. You're good. It's all good. That's, uh, that is probably. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, it's my voice. He doesn't like my voice. She doesn't like my voice. <laughs> she has a crayon and she wants to go call her on stuff. And I'm trying to get her in her seat to get some food. That, that's an as- you're, you're, you're suppressing a su- uh, aspiring artist, Becca. What are you doing? I know. I know. <laughs> um, oh, so I had a buddy over yesterday who has – he's a compound guy, and, I've, and we've hunted together, and he's a good dude, but he got a Samick for Christmas. So he brought it over yesterday. We got it set up, and he was shooting probably eight yards working on form and, and I had a uh All right. I had a uh, arrow gripper sitting on top of the uh target. And I said, Go ahead and hit that gripper and I shot and I and I shot right over the gripper and he tagged it. <laughs> I was like, see, it's that easy, man. You still you still bow fish a bunch then, huh? When you can Yes, I do. Pretty much all summer long that's all I do. I love it. Oh, so such- I yeah, I do that a lot. I got to travel to bowfish. I would do it so much. Um, what do you got? Just a carp, or what do you? What do you got there? We have. See, I'm lucky because a lot of our public land here, I have access to a lot of water, and we have carp, we have gar, we have really buffalo fish, and we have suckers. So we have a, a really good variety. I had no idea that that gar were that far north. I thought they were just like a Texas. Oh yeah. We oh, have damn. tons. We have so many, and they're my favorite thing to bowfish. But there, I actually only have a couple spots locally for those since we moved further from the river. So, uh, any of the uh, any of the fish that you uh, are shooting, is there any of them good eating, or they just all fertilizer? Or um, yes, a, a gar are good to eat. Really. I know that sound. Yeah, that sounds a little odd. Most people look at me like I'm crazy when I say that, but yeah, they're good. Are they, are they like a bony, uh, bony, oily type fish? Or? Uh, no, not at all. Um, the hardest part is actually getting to the meat because their scales are so tough. You have to use tin snips. 
So you pretty much have to just cut the scales off. And then there's two pieces of meat, like back straps on either side of the backbone. And um, it's more like the texture of chicken. It's not like that flaky white meat that fish usually is. Um, People who have had alligator say that it's similar, but I have never had alligator, so I can't really... I can't really say. Yeah. So does that meat come off that, that like talking about backstrap, does that come off like no bones in it? Just a, just a, yeah, there's meat? no bones in it. Oh. It's literally exactly like a backstrap. You would take off the deer the same exact way. Wow. That sounds good. Yeah. It, good. It, now the rest of them like carp and stuff. Um, when I, uh, the few times I did it, we saved them for pear bait. Um, what do you, uh, use them for fertilizer or anything? Yeah, I don't really do much with them. I just help bait, yeah. fertilizer, just whatever. Makes awesome fertilizer. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, small game? I know you small game hunt. Oh, yes. I love small game hunting. That was the first thing I ever hunted with traditional, with small game. Did you? So, I'm assuming you grew up hunting in a, in a hunting family. Yeah. Yes, I did. Um, I grew up, my dad's a big time hunter and he taught me to hunt. He taught all of my siblings to hunt. So I grew up hunting and fishing. Are any of your siblings uh, stick bow aficionados? Well, recently, like within the past several weeks, my one sister bought her first recurve and she's going to try to work her way up to hunting with it. So we'll see. She really loves it. I don't know. If she will eventually hunt with it or not, but she likes shooting it. You, I saw, you know, we, we've talked and we were going to try to get this done in December and you had, uh, you had an announcement to make. We couldn't get to it till after the first of the year. And, uh, you did have a big announcement here recently. Yes, I did. What was that? Like no one, no one on social media was expecting it, but I signed with three rivers archery for 2021. That is awesome. Yes, I'm very excited. Um, they have been a uh, they've been a distri- uh, supplier. Gosh, I've got some old, old, old traditional bow hunter magazines from '89. You know, and they've always been in there. And was the first um, was the first Three Rivers? I mean, it sold once. Was the first one in Indiana? Do you remember? I'm not really sure. I I've only ever known it as being in Indiana. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So what bow are you shooting? I am shooting a tomahawk bow, a long bow, which is actually owned and made by Three Rivers. I'm shooting the Kitska long bow, and it's awesome. I was so nervous when he said that's what they would send me to try, and I was afraid I would hate it or something, but it's awesome. I actually shot really well with it, which I was very surprised. Now, you were a, a recurve shooter before, though, right? With bear? Yes, I I have some longbows, but I, I never really shot them like I shot my recurves. I always found recurves a little easier, I guess. Um, so it, I was pleas- pleasantly surprised. That's, that's cool. Now, how long did you, uh, how long were you with bear? I was a bear for three years. Oh, wow, yeah. So it was quite a while. How did you, how did you get uh, hooked up with bear? Um, well, for, I don't know what year was it? I was with October Mountain Products for a year, and one of the guys that worked for Bear reached out to me, and my contract was going to be up with October Mountain, and he asked if I'd be interested in signing with Bear, so obviously I was, and um, I went up to ATA and signed my contract, and you you went to an ATA mm-hmm. show? Oh, I'm sorry, what? No, did you say you went to an ATA show? Yes. Oh, what was that like? Um, I went, I've been to, I've been, I think, three times. And every year, it's just, it's kind of overwhelming. <laughs> if you're not, if you're not someone that loves crowds. There's a lot to see, and there's a lot of people. Oh, yeah. I'll bet. I'll bet. 
So what uh, what bows were you shooting when you were with Bear? Um, I shot the, the first year I was with Bear. I shot a fifty nine Kodiak, obviously the remake. Yeah. And then since I had Isabella, and I thought I would be hunting at the ground blind, I decided to try the Super Mag forty eight, and that's what I ended up shooting for most of my time with them. How long is that longbow you're shooting? You know, tip to tip. Uh, sixty two inches. Oh wow! Boy, that's a change. Forty eight so, to sixty two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I figured I'm not in a ground blind. It's not doesn't really matter. Yeah. Uh, what air is you shooting off that? Um, I'm shooting wood shaft arrows. They're actually from Three Rivers. I have the harvester arrows that they built for me. They have special uh, Becca Garris uh, uh, limited edition. <laughs> no, I just picked a standard one from their from their website and went with that. What kind of broadheads do you usually shoot? Uh, woodsman. Oh, I've yeah. been shooting the Woodsman ever since I switched to the Wood Arrows. And I was shooting the original Woodsman for the past two years. And this year I actually switched to... Like in the past several weeks, I switched. I wanted to try the Elite Woodsman. Yeah. So we'll see how. I'm sure they'll do amazing. Yeah, I shot those Woodsmen when they first came out. I shot shot them quite a bit, kind of exclusively. I killed a lot of stuff with them. Uh, I still carry them for turkeys. Yeah. I think they're I've really had good. really good luck with them. Yeah. Cool. Um. So, what's what 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 can we expect to uh, to see you with Three Rivers Archery? Um. You're gonna be going to sh- um, shoots in, in their booth or shooting their stuff? <laughs> well, or? it's hard to say with the whole corona thing going on. I don't know what's going to be going on in 2021. This last year, all shoot, pretty much all shoots were canceled and stuff. So I don't really know if there will be any events or not. If there are local events, I would attend to represent Three Rivers and then... I will be promoting on social media and sharing things like gear that I like from them. And cool. Um, yeah, we, there, there seems to be a lot of the national organizations right now kind of gearing up. It seems like, you know, you see Pope and young and I, I, I just, I don't know why I just said them, but you see some of these national organizations kind of getting ready for a, another no convention, no rendezvous type year. And, it's going to be tough on some of these yeah. groups, especially, you know, like we know, I it's, know. yeah, it's going to be tough on them. Yep. A lot of, a lot of things are canceled already and like all the way through spring. It's crazy. Well, what's it like out there in, in, um, in Ohio? I mean, is it, uh, like everybody's walking around masked up and horrified? Uh, or? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like by now most people are like kind of over it, but we have mask mandates and, I believe there's still a curfew in effect, but what? it's not like I'm ever out that late. So I'm pretty sure I could be wrong. Really? I think there's a 10 p.m. curfew. What is, what is, Unless you're this COVID run rampant quote, unquote, after 10 or what? Uh, it, none of this stuff makes sense. So <laughs> you know what? I, I was talking. Yeah. I was talking to a friend of mine at the gym. She's a nutritionist there, and we were just shooting the breeze and. And she had her, her mask on. I said, do you want me to wear a mask? And, and she said, no, I'm fine. And uh, we were talking. And I said, man, I, I, I'm not sure I could work out with a mask on. And she said, well, this one's yeah. specifically made, and it really breathes easy, easy. And I said, stop right there. I said, like, <laughs> <laughs> can you see the ludicrousy in this? This is crazy. Yeah. So, it's, kind of... it's stupid. <laughs> oh. So how long have you been shooting stick bows? You said four years. You're shooting a compound before um, then. Yeah, since 2000. Actually, it's 2016 was the first year that I shot. Officially took a recurve to hunt with 2016. So I guess it'll be close to this year. It'll be five years. Did you just think it was going to be cool, or uh, were you doing it because other people were doing it, or? No, I knew I didn't know anyone that was doing it. I did it because I felt like I had lost whatever had gotten me into bow hunting in the beginning. Like it wasn't the challenge and excitement wasn't there, and that's what I was looking. 
that's what I was looking for. I ultimately wanted to challenge myself a little more. And I definitely did. It's way more challenging. <laughs> but I don't ever see myself going back to compound. What, what do you think? Um, I mean, you've obviously seen the, uh, the explosion in interest in traditional archery. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I feel like maybe people are getting into it for the same reason that I did. They want to challenge themselves to try something new. And I know sometimes I've been seeing a lot that people want to do it because their grandparents did it or their dad did it. And they want to, I guess, feel closer to them if they passed away. Um, I've seen a lot of people say, Oh, this is a bow that my grandparents used to shoot. And I want to use it in their honor. So I feel like everybody has their own personal reason for wanting to get into it. Yeah, I, I've, 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 you know, marveled at it the last two and a half years or so. I think it's been two and a half years that I've been doing the podcast. You know, and even before then, you're watching it kind of blow up. Um, it's, it's, it, I, I, can, I almost feel like you know when I got into it in the in the uh, early '90s or 1990, it was such a small faction and you really had to be you really had to have this burning desire to want to shoot a stick bow because wasn't a lot of people doing it and uh there wasn't a lot of yeah there just wasn't a lot of information out there uh today it's just so easy i think i wonder if some of it isn't um you know obviously there's a lot of people that are very successful with the compounds and, and they want the challenge but i think some of it i think i think there's the cool factor at this point so some people like, like yeah it looks I got cool. it. I- you know, I agree. It does. Yeah. <laughs> and I hope they I have, agree with you. Yeah. I hope they have some success because cool only lasts so long <laughs> if you're not killing anything. Yep. I agree. <laughs> so talking about, you know, mentioned social media um, and you just recently broke a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. Uh, on just, Instagram. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How did that all start? Like, like how did you start off? Like, why did you get 100,000 people following you? <laughs> you ever ask yourself that? <laughs> yes, I wonder that all the time. Like, I, I built a page to just share, you know, my hunting stuff. And I don't really, maybe it was because I was a woman. I'm not really sure why it took off, but it, it did. And um, in... It was 2015 or 2016 I posted a couple bow fishing videos and they actually ended up going viral and I gained a lot of followers that year so I know that was definitely part of it so so uh how long you been on Instagram then must have been on there before um probably five or six years okay yeah so it wasn't like six years wasn't like an overnight overnight success it's been no it wasn't like an overnight success yeah no, definitely not. And then it's funny because like each different stage of my life, I'll lose followers and I'll gain followers. Like when I, it was funny when I got married, I lost a whole bunch of like thousands. And then <laughs> they just when I had Isabella, I lost, <laughs> I lost thousands. Like I don't understand. Were you following me? If you're just going to unfollow me because I'm married. Like obviously you weren't following me for the right reasons anyway. So that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, they were. Yeah, they, it's funny. They were rejected. <laughs> yeah, like what did they do? What did they think was going to happen? This is not a dating app. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I see so much. Um, there's, I, there is so much. To me, there's so much uh, downside to social media. I mean, there is. Oh, there definitely that, is. Like that real just. It, on on many levels, but at the same time, uh, to be you know you meet some and and again I say meet in air quotes you meet some really cool <laughs> people and you develop these you know long yes. distance relationships with you know people that you may never look them in the eye but you know you're they're they're good they seem to be good folks you share pictures and it can last for years yeah definitely yeah I mean I definitely agree um it, it, um I mean. Especially if you look at even if you look at the, the traditional aspect of it, like I don't really know 
there are a couple guys local here. That I've I've never actually met them. I'm friends with them on Facebook that do shoot traditional, but overall, I don't know anyone locally. So social media has been a way to connect with other people, and then even a smaller grouping is women in yeah. traditional archery. That's even a smaller group, and <clears throat> I've connected with quite a few women hunters that hunt with traditional bows and it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. There's some, uh, there's some hardcore lady hunters out there. Um, like seriously oh, yeah. get after it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. There really are. Yeah. So, well, do you guys have like this secret back room that you guys all belong to? <laughs> like, you know, like don't let any guys <laughs> <Yes>. in. <laughs> I mean, there are there actually are a couple groups on Facebook that are um, women of traditional archery. Oh no, kidding. there's a couple different groups. I'll be dang. Oh yeah, yeah, it's kind of cool. Huh. Uh, now, I have noticed that most of them are. Oh, I don't know if I want to say most, but a large majority of them are target archers. Yeah. But there still are quite a few hunters in there as well. Yeah. Well, that's cool. That's cool. Um, yeah. Um, on the negative side of social media, um, it's amazing. Like people, I I just ran into somebody the other day that, uh, got after the podcast. They won't see me specifically, but you know, had nothing but negative things to say about some of the guests that I have on. He was upset because I talked to a compound guy on the podcast and I'm like, kind of rude. Well, well, I just, it amazed me. Like, why would you spend, why would you, if you didn't like the episode, don't listen, right? But why would you spend, why yeah, would you exactly. waste time in your life <laughs> to get on on Instagram and say something bad about the podcast because you didn't like who I had on? Yeah, I mean, it's, that's, it's free. That's really stupid. <laughs> you know, yeah, I don't understand people. Uh, but I've been fortunate. I, I You probably put up with a, you know, a ton of crap, but I've been pretty fortunate. I don't, oh, yeah. I don't have to. Uh, oh, you you kind of got mauled by some anti hunters once, didn't you? Uh, yeah, several times <laughs> on like a national level, wow. unfortunately. But it blew over. The first time it was, um, I'm probably going to say his last name wrong, but I think he's British comedian. He's an <laughs> actor, Ricky Gervais. I think I've heard that. Javaz or Gervais or something like that? Yeah, I don't know. He posted reposted one of my hunting pictures on the page and he has like millions of followers. So I got a lot of uh, anti-feedback from that. And then last year, the Daily Mail did an article on me and that didn't go over that well. But I mean, I also got, I got a lot of positive feedback too. So that was nice. Did you gain any followers? (laughs) Yes, a lot, actually. <laughs> and, I mean, going to read, when I went to read through the original comments on the post that they had made, I expected it to be all negative. But there were a lot of people that weren't even hunters that were saying, oh, you know, that's really cool that she's going out with her daughter and, you know, getting food instead of just going to the store and buying it that someone else killed. Huh. Yeah, again, I mean can't imagine people wasting time. I mean, I mean, what's that knucklehead got going on? Yeah, is... people have way too much time on their hands. <laughs> I was up super <laughs> early today. I now, know the feeling. Yeah, so, yeah, I suppose you do. So coming on to springtime, uh, when your deer season winds down, uh, you just, are you out, like, you take Isabella out and you do a little scouting, um, you go on bow fishing. How, yes, how are I you do. gearing up for the next? Um, so... After deer season is over in February, then rabbit hunting until March, and then I usually shed hunt until April, and then I turkey hunt until May. Nice. <laughs> I bow fish until September. So there's always something. Wow, that'll keep you going. Um, rabbit hunting, uh, cottontails. What are you using for uh, heads there? Yeah. So in the past, I have used either small broadheads or like the little uh, judo type tips. Yeah. But last year, Three River sent me a bunch of 
um, they're small game heads. I don't remember the name of them. I shared them in my stories the other day, actually, and I don't remember what they were called, but they're for wood arrows, and that's what I've been using this year for squirrels and for rabbits. Um, I miss rabbit hunting. We've got snowshoe hares out here. I grew up uh, kind of. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, in the northeast. Um, and I miss cottontails. Those are fun. Now, you just hunting. Uh, they're so fun. Yeah, with a, with, you don't have a dog, do you? Yes, I do have a oh, beagle. Do you? Oh, man. I'm really yes. jealous. Yep. Yep. That's what I got her for originally. I grew up, we grew up with a beagle. My dad was always big into rabbit hunting. He had beagles when he was younger. So kind of always was something in my life. And then I got her specifically to hunt rabbits. And she's a house dog. She's not just a hunting dog. She's spoiled. But every year I take her out, we run rabbits. Yeah, uh, that looks like so much fun. I, uh, I there was a point in my life where I swore I was going to get beagles or a beagle for for snowshoe hares here, but I don't know. I probably That'd fortunate. Be awesome. Yeah, it's probably fortunate I didn't. <laughs> they they don't they don't make really good. I didn't think they make good pets. You're telling me they do make good pets. Oh my god, she she is literally the best dog I've ever owned in my life. Like pet wise, not just hunting wise. She's amazing. Well, can you just let her? And she's. Can you let her go out to outside without? Oh, she. Yeah, we just let her. She's a house dog. She's a lap dog. Um, that's not what I had intended, but <laughs> she ended. I ended up letting her in the bed with me when she was a puppy because she would cry all night, and I was like, I felt bad. And everybody always says you're going to ruin your beagle that way, but she's a really good hunter, and she's amazing with my daughter. She's a good dog. I'll probably I don't know if I'll ever be able to get another beagle because I don't think I'll ever get one like her again. Gosh, isn't that something with dogs? I've I had a dog early on. I, I mean off track track here, but I had a dog early on that every dog since then is measured by that dog and is never measured up. <laughs> yep, that's what it is. Yep. Yep. Um Yeah. And she's she's very it's funny. She didn't even bark until she was like four months old. She didn't make any noise besides like puppy that's, crying. No, I don't know much about very, beagles, but that's not a good sign. <laughs> usually they're extremely vocal. The dogs that I grew up with, they would bark at everything. And, you know, the big beagle, the beagle bark. Yeah. Um, she only pretty, pretty much only barks when she's on a rabbit. So when she's hunting, she does what she's supposed to. But in the house, she's very quiet. She's, she listens very well for a beagle too. They're very hard headed and kind of hard to train. That's what I heard. So, did you buy her from some high end uh, trainer, or did you just get lucky? Um, I got her in Kentucky. Someone that bred beagles, and she um, she came with papers. Yeah. She was the runt. She was the runt of the litter, the littlest one. Now, so you can let her out and run around the yard, and not a problem. But when it's time, to <laughs> no. Go, oh, oh, I thought you <laughs> I could. cannot let her. Well, so we have this giant fenced-in pasture that I used to let her just go out and let her run around the pasture, and whenever I was ready, I would just bring her inside. But she figured out how to get out of there, and she ran away twice, and I thought I was never going to get her back. So now she's strictly a house dog unless I'm out there with her. (laughs) That was heartbroken because I thought I'd lost her forever. Uh, How old is she? Uh, I want to say she's... Six or seven. Oh, she's just still in her prime Eight, then, eh? Six. Yeah, she's she's got quite a few years ahead of her, thankfully. The, the beagle we had as a kid, he lived to be 14. Wow. So I'm hoping we still have. She she is literally my daughter's favorite, and it's going to be horrible when she's gone. You're You're talking about the beagle you got right now? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is, uh, that, it, that's why I hate dogs. And I, I, no, I shouldn't say hate dogs. That's why I hate having dogs. And, you know. Yeah, it's hard. At the same time. And like when I got her, I didn't, I didn't think that, oh, I'll have her when I have kids. Well, now I do. And now that makes it even harder. You know, I, we, we had a uh, yellow lab, this, this last dog. Oh, geez, I don't know, probably 12 years, something like that. And, of course, didn't measure up to the last one. But, you know, he's still a good dog. 
my son was probably yeah. 12 when, uh, you know, we had to, we had to put him down and it's, yeah, I mean, it bad. sucks, but I do think it's important. I think it's, I think there's something healthy there for kids, um, you know, to, to experience yeah. that. I mean, I really do. Maybe that's yeah. I mean, they'll, they'll give them, it's, I mean, it's heartbreaking, but I mean, they got to understand that at some point in their lives. Yeah. And, uh, you know, to experience death and the loss of something they love. And, uh, maybe that's, the, yeah. maybe that's the guy in me opposed to the, the, uh, nurturing mother in you, but <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, I wasn't going to shield him from it. I'm like, Hey buddy, this sucks. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So are you just telling me I should get a beagle now? I hear, I hear this. <laughs> So one last thing before uh, before I turn it over to you, if you want to hit anything, uh, Compton's Traditional Bow Hunters, you're a member, right? Yes, I am. Uh, mm-hmm. Have you ever been to their rendezvous over in Michigan that they're not going to have this year? I haven't. I've I wanted to. There, I don't think they're having it this year. I'm pretty no, sure it was not. canceled. I was so looking Just forward like to it. Literally every other event that I was thinking of attending. Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, I've never been. I was really looking forward. There's so many people that I want to uh, meet, shake their hand, have a beer with. Uh, I know, me too. Especially over in Michigan. There's Michigan, Wisconsin. Now, have you ever been to the Fred Bear Day Did you say event Fred, that's put on? Did you say Fred Bear Day? Yeah, Fred Bear Day. They do um, the traditional bear archery group. A bunch of the guys from there on Fred Bear's birthday – they do a big event there. Really? That would be awesome. Yeah. I've never heard of that. And Yeah, um, Stephanie Newman is planning on going this year, and I was thinking of trying to go, but I don't know if it's going to get canceled last minute, or it's so hard to say what's going to happen. So his, his birthday's March 8th, right, or 6th? Yes. Which now, one? I don't know if they're having it on his birthday. They usually have on a weekend so more people can attend. So it was probably going to be on the 6th and 7th. That would be awesome. Now, that traditional, do we just call them traditional bear archery group? I, yes. I, um, I, it's a Facebook group that is exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> There's a bunch of people that like traditional bear archery stuff, bows, collectibles. Um, I don't know if you saw... I did an article for Outdoor Life a few weeks back about the traveling bear bow that they have. No, I didn't. Yeah, um, in 2019, the group reached out to send a bow, and it basically travels from person to person around the country. It's cool. Wow. Um, Stephanie actually has it now. Oh, that's right. I did see that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so do they have it in Grayling, or where, where, where is it at? The uh, the Fred Bear Day? Yeah. I think so. I believe so. I've never been. That would be a hoot. I know. And it, a lot of people go. The last year, it looked like there was a lot of people. They posted pictures and everything in the group. Now, my wife is from... Uh, my wife is from Michigan, like Ann Arbor or something. And uh, you, I have literally never been to Michigan. Oh, I was one time in a really bad place in Michigan. It was a bad, bad place. <laughs> <laughs> I always hear those pure Michigan ads on the radio, and it always makes me want to go, but I haven't been yet. Um, I'm a, I'm totally intrigued by the whole uh, his not history, but it's just so rich. There's just the you know Wisconsin, Michigan. Uh, Minnesota. Yeah, it's just a rich uh, heritage of traditional archers there. It really gets me going. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, I feel like a lot of traditional archers that I follow on social media are from Michigan. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Um, so my wife was. I think she. I think she grew up in Ann Arbor or something like that. Um, and so we were married. Gosh, I don't know, probably five years or something like that. And she kept telling me about this bow that was in her basement growing up. And she said it was a long mm-hmm. bow. And so finally I said, well, I'll, I'll pay the shipping. Just have your folks send it out. You know, we're in Idaho. 
Right. And so I get this box, this big, big long box, and uh, I get, I shake it out, and out falls an absolute beautiful uh, fifty original fifty nine Kodiak. <laughs> 40, uh, 47 pounds. I think it's like 62 or 64 inches. The The coin had gotten shook out of it, but it was still in the box there. Um, and that thing. That's awesome. Yeah, that thing is so much fun to shoot. I've actually. Yeah. I, I've, I, I had it in tree stand one year. I was going to, it was my goal was to kill a deer with it. And uh, I had some, some bare wood arrows and bare razor heads. And I had a forked horn right at the base of my tree stand. It was just a slam dunk shot and I just didn't take the shot. I thought I was going to kill something better. And gosh, still, still kicks. Still, wait, yeah, wait. I have a lot. Yeah, I have a lot of regrets like that. Yeah. Like with compound, I passed up so many deer. That I'm like, I was so stupid. Why didn't I just shoot it? <laughs> the deer that I would absolutely love to shoot with a traditional bow. And then of course I don't see any bucks when I'm hunting with a traditional bow. Well, we it was early in the season. If I remember right, it was early in the season, and uh, we only get one deer tag period here. So oh, like, wow. Yeah. Um, everybody thinks living out west is so glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not always. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. That's another story. But anyways, yeah, so that bow is just beautiful, and, and I shoot it. I've shot it once in a while. I've actually dry-fired it probably three times. It's the most I've ever dry fired <laughs> it with knocks breaking or knocks falling off. Um, but then I bought a, uh, I picked up a, a, um, a replica 59. And, uh, yeah, that's what I have. Yeah, I shot that. I actually gave it to a buddy of mine. Um, but it's pretty, pretty, pretty nice bow. So, I don't know how, we, oh, we're talking about Fred Bear days. Yeah, that would be a hoot. Uh, absolute hoot. And yeah, I think it would be really fun. Just even just to meet the people, and they have uh, they do an arrow salute. They do a whole bunch of cool stuff. So yeah, so speaking of that traditional bear archery group, um, I see that Compton's doing a bear bow uh, giveaway with them. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so it's on Facebook. I'm not on that group. I asked to be in that group, so I looked them up. It's what is traditional bear archery group and it's kind of what it's got kind of like a yellow emblem with the the, the bear archery in it is that right yes yeah yes. and it says uh entries, it says entries free, free simply like and share this facebook post so if you're on facebook be part of that group and uh join and then oh, you that's can cool yeah and then you can join compton's too at the same time oh that's pretty cool yeah All right, what well the bow is gosh where is it it was like a an original I'm going to screw it up. I think it was an original 64. Oh, there it is right there. It's, uh, so in support of the traditional bear archery group, virtual archery expo. So they're going to do a virtual, virtual expo. Yes, they are. Yeah. January 23rd and 24th. Yes. I did know about that. Um, the package includes a 60 inch 1964 bear Kodiak in mint condition, 45 pounds at 28. Oh, wow. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. I wonder who donated that. Um, a dozen arrows. Does it say? Uh, uh, Three Rivers threw in a hundred dollar gift card. Uh, Grayling oh, cool. model. I I actually meant to ask Jonathan if Three Rivers was participating in that, um, in the online event, so I could, if they were, I was going to help them promote. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Well, if they're if they're donating, I'm. Yeah, I didn't say, I can't see where it's, uh, I can't see who's donated the bow, but that's super cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Un- unfortunately, it seems like that's where everything's going is virtual. Yep, unfortunately. So. Which, is, I mean, it's sad because a lot of these companies depend on, you know, the events and everything to make money, and this year it doesn't look like they're going to have them anymore. Yeah, you know, and I've been trying to, um, to you know, say that on, on the podcast, like, um, I, I won't single out any companies, but you know, the ones that support us at the ground level, right? Like yeah. three, three rivers, the footage shaft. I mean, you know, you name them off the, the people that you see at the shoots and the people that are, you know, vested in this, um, in traditional archery. Yep. Those, if it costs us a couple extra bucks and you can afford it, definitely support them. 
Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, man, Isabella sounds pretty quiet. She could take a nap. Yeah, she was. <laughs> I gave her some food and water, and she's happy. <laughs> I can't believe you suppressed her uh, artistic <laughs> outlet with her crayon. What kind of a parent are you? <laughs> I know. She got into crayon a couple weeks ago, and she scribbled. I don't know what, what I was doing that I missed her doing this. But, yeah, she colored on her cabinets, and then she came and told me. She tells on herself. <laughs> That's good. Oh, that's good. Well, hopefully she continues to do that through her teenage years. It'll make parenting easier, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah it'll make my life easier. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you got anything you want to add? Um, not, that, not that I can think of. I'll probably think of something once we're done with the podcast. That's how it always goes. That's how it always yeah, goes. Yeah, I know. And that's, yeah. Um, well, Congratulations, uh, getting on with Three Rivers. That's that's going to be awesome. Thank you. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when I was with Bear, it was really cool, not just because, uh, you know, Bear, big name, but just, you know, the history of it and everything. But I do feel like it was harder to – I didn't really feel like I was going to grow in the company – and now with Three Rivers, I feel like I can grow with the company, and it's more of a family-type feel, yeah. which I think is a much better fit. 100%. You know, um, I did some stuff, and, and I don't know. I'm, I'm, it, it, I don't even know if I want to say it. Um, <laughs> you know, well, Bear Archery is such such rich history, right? And you look at... Oh, uh, yeah. And it's so cool. I mean, I, I, I dig history. I like I liked history in, in school. I oh, love it. Same here. Yeah. Yes. I, I love Me the his, history of bear archery. Um, yep. They, they, they have such a, such a, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to say precious, but I mean, they have this, this golden egg. Um, and yep. you know, you, when you deal with the mom and pop, okay. When you deal with the mom and pop shops, um, they seem to be very much vested in the community because they know if the community grows, then they will grow. Um, yes, exactly. Yeah, and when I, um, I just, I didn't get that feel from uh, from Bear, and, and uh, I don't, I feel bad even yeah. saying that because I know there's great people that work there, and hopefully, it oh does, yeah, there definitely are. And it does look like that, you know, they seem to be posting more stuff. Um, uh, yes, I will say that in in the past year they. Um, they got some new people running like the social media and stuff and it has been really great to see them um, posting more, interacting more and um, posting more traditional type things. So I feel like a lot of times traditional is a little bit of an afterthought just because compounds are, you know, their main thing now, not as many people shoot traditional. So it's nice to see companies post more about the traditional as well as the compound and crossbow. Yeah, I wish them I wish them nothing but uh, success. Um, you know, I'll say that my when I was uh, trying to work with them early on, and it was more because I wanted like like bear archery. You know, like I, it's, it was cool, and I wanted to help them. And I yeah. think they get I think they get a ton of free advertising just because yeah. you know people you know they they shoot a bow and they put it out there, and and so. When I was when I approached them and, and you know wanted to work with them, I was like, hey, you know, you guys really should uh, take the traditional thing and, and go and and really run with it. But they wanted to uh, promote everything. Um, you know, it, it wasn't they could do so much. Oh gosh, so much more. Yeah, with the traditional. Yeah, and so when I when I deal with Black Widow and Toby and and Roger and those guys, they're just like. You know, you want to talk about another bow year? Have at it. You know, they're all about growing the community. <laughs> yeah. And when I did something yeah. with Bear Archery, they said, well, we'll only put it on our Facebook or our Instagram group if it's nothing but Bear. There can't be any other manufacturers yeah. in there. It's like, okay. <laughs> so are you in this for the for the greater good or what? What are we doing here? <laughs> yeah. I, I wish them I nothing. I mean, with, that, with a company that big, I feel like that's what you're going to run into. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's a personal thing at all. It's just a corporation. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. It, it's. Just, I mean, it's just how it is, and that's why I feel like it wasn't 
the right place for me anymore. It was, I mean, it was great opportunity and I felt like they helped me out with a lot of things, but it just, it was time to move on. Yeah. You know, and I've tried to get, uh, I've tried to get them on the podcast, one person specifically, uh, probably four times. And, uh, I mean, emails and yeah, uh, they just, I don't know. They no interest. They're happy where they're at. And, uh, yeah, Stephanie, Steph, they got. I think they did well in picking up Stephanie. She's uh, she's on oh, her staff. I one hundred percent agree. She's awesome. So she will be. She'll be perfect. Yeah, and and if I don't, I'd like to know how that conversation went because I know how her and I's conversation goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's, she probably just called him up and said, "Hey, I'm on your pro staff." <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm really, I'm really happy for her. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. That was cool. And then uh, Brian Burkhart and uh, Jim Eckout, uh, they're going to be on their pro staff, and I think that's a great move. Oh, because, are they? Yep. That's cool. I saw they put um, Fred Eichler. They signed Fred Eichler, too. Yeah. Um, you know, and Brian, and, and I think that's – it's it. Brian and Jim, I mean, those guys, and probably Stephanie as well. well I'll say Brian and Jim because they've been at it for so much longer, but you talk – now they're organic. Um, I think it's like really smart for for Bear to pick those guys up because they. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, there, it's it, there is. They've been out there for for you know twenty years or whatever. Oh yeah, they they know what they're doing. Yeah, and, and not just that, but I mean, they have been promoting bear archery and enjoying their products. Oh yeah, um, legitimately, and and I think. You can, and I feel like they have a lot of people that look up to them. Yep. Not for their social media following or anything like that, just because who they are and what they do. Exactly. And when, you know, here we go back to this age of social media. When you see somebody with, you know, 10,000 followers saying that these are the best, this is the best bow or this is the best boots or this is the best. You know, well, how yeah. long have you been doing it, right? Did did you just get yep, that? Exactly. You know, I did see yep, somebody exactly. somebody just got a, a quiver. I, I know the guy got the quiver just months prior. And then at the end of the season, he's like, <laughs> This is the best quiver ever. You know, I've put this Oh uh, yeah. He uh, used it like two days and yeah. it's suddenly the best. Yeah. Um but you know, guys yeah. like Jim and, and uh Brian, uh they're gonna be promoting equipment that they have used successfully for decades. So I think yeah, it's awesome. exactly. Yeah, that's something I always try not to do on my page is say something's amazing if I've only just got it. Yeah, that's that can be a trap. Um, yeah. That can be a real trap. And it doesn't look good on the uh, for the product uh, oftentimes. No, it doesn't. Oftentimes. Definitely doesn't. But, uh, or the company. No, no. And, you know, I wish uh, – Bear archery, nothing but success, and and uh, I think yep, they got. Here. I think they got a great, uh, great group coming into twenty twenty one. Yep. Well, it's great talking to you. We we've tried to do this. Uh, well, we played phone tag for about a or email tag for about a year <laughs> yeah, and a half. I know. <laughs> I know. So, keep doing what you're doing. Social media sometimes makes it hard to. Oh yeah, get yeah. in contact. Yeah, how did you not see my message? You, you only had a hundred thousand followers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so lately on Instagram, someone will message me, and then I message them back, and then the message is just gone. What? And I don't know what happens to it. And I made a post in my stories about this a couple of weeks ago, and I guess it's happened to some other people that have like a bigger following. Like the messages just disappear and they're not there in your inbox anymore. Huh. So half the time I'm like, I don't know if they message me back or if they just haven't seen it yet. And it's or, always like, do I message them or just wait or it's hard. Or is that what like fame- I try to, <laughs> I try to reach out and like respond to people as much as possible, which can be really hard, but. Or is that just what Instagram famous- doesn't make it easier. Is that just what famous <laughs> people do? <laughs> I always say that I'm not famous because I'm not rich. Famous people are rich. <laughs> hey, I appreciate it. It's fun talking to you and uh look forward to seeing yeah, you. Thanks for having me on. Having a great 2021. Hey, you too. All right, take care. You too. Bye. <laughs>